My name is James Mwenda, a Rhino caretaker here in Opejita Conservancy. I have been working with the last Northern White Rhinos for the last four and a half years. And with an open mind, this rhino caretaking job, especially with the realization that they are the last of their kind, is emotionally draining. But to, hey, one. Hey, girl. Hey. When I arrived here as a caretaker, we have a phone of the white rhinos. Then, this one? brought mm -hmm. to Kenya from mm -hmm. Czech Republic. Mm -hmm with the aid of okay. trying to bring them through an initiative called The Last Chance of Survival. Before I came to work in Opejita Conservancy, I had worked as a gardener for eight years. But I also grew in an area where we had human wildlife conflict, especially with the elephants that would come and tear away our farms. And I realized that there was a need having a people who would act as a bridge between animals and people. And that is where the dream was born uh, of being a conservationist. When I moved to work with the Northern White Shinos, I was just doing it as a job. One morning, I found the second last known Northern White Shinos to me lying in an abnormal portion. I went to cross-check whether all was well with him. And I realized that he was dead upon reaching him. And when I lay my hands on him, I realized we were down now to only one male. His name was Sudan. I came to work very closely with Sudan, who was known now as the last male Northern White Rhino. And over time, we created a special bond. One evening in March 2015, as I was, I'd already fed him and I was um, looking at him, I noticed a tear drop off his eyes. This tear was large enough for me to see it. I laid my hands on him and I realized there was an emptiness in him, a sadness that he carried every day, and he had no other way of expressing it. Done. That tear completely changed me. Done. He needed people to voice him out, in the aspect of realizing what he stood for. I laid my hand and promised him that I would do with him all I could afford to be his voice. That's what I'm trying to be today. Sudan was a sweet rhino that you could ever be in the presence of. I think he allowed us to get close to him because maybe he knew what he stood for, that it was a lesson for us to learn from him. Sudan never asked for this to be labeled the last of his kind. It was political instability, greed, corruption, traditions, beliefs and norms that has made these northern veterans to be the last of their kind. As of now, we have only two females known to exist. Najin, who is Sudan's daughter, and Fatu, Sudan's granddaughter, who carry Sudan's legacy, we have fixed our hopes on. The rhino horn is made of keratin, the same component that makes our hair and our fingernails, because it's merely nothing else. It's clear that if the buying stops, the killing will too. We are all here today because we are in a collective agreement that what has happened to the northern white rhinos and what is happening to many other more individual species is not the way it should be. We have a common understanding 
that we have a sole responsibility to make the world a better place. We cannot single out only those people who are involved in taking and killing away our animals. I believe today Sudan is looking down to us. And I believe the greatest question he has is whether we have learned so much from his existence and what he stood for. And I believe if he would be here right now, he would ask us to open our eyes and see the reality of what extinction is and how much as humans we need to rise and protect what we have left before time is too late. I would want to challenge and compel all of us to realize ourselves and not only talk, but it's time to take up action. It is our collective responsibility to stand for the cause of saving individual species that are at the brink of extinction. Not only for us, but also for the future generations. Because sometimes we even remain silent when we can have a call to action. If we don't learn from him, then how else are we going to learn? And with which other species are we going to learn from? It's going to be late. It's going to be too late before we learn. So we all have a hand in this. And we all collectively can sacrifice something. It's not too late.